Today we'll take this standard consumer grade TV and add RGB inputs to it. Most TVs with on-screen displays have this capability built in, but it does require some tinkering to take advantage of. I'm not the first to showcase this mod, but I wanted to try it on a TV that's about 10 years newer compared to other examples of this mod found online. The theory behind this mod is hijacking the on-screen display signal lines, which are RGB, and input our own RGB signal. So why do this? Well, compared to composite video, RGB will give us an ultra crisp picture that compares to arcade CRTs. This is a cheap way to make an arcade monitor. A few things to note. This is a late model TV and production of these tubes were a dying technology with LCD TVs on their way to dominate the market. Therefore, no service manuals for this TV exist or ones that I could at least find. And being manufactured in 2003, surface mount parts were common in board layouts. And because of this, this mod is a bit more complicated than I was expecting. Without a service manual and a full schematic, I'm going to do a bit of guessing and have to make a few assumptions. Just a disclaimer, all TVs are different. This mod may not work for you. The details in this video could be inaccurate because analog stuff is not my thing. And CRTs have very high voltages inside. Do not try this. Okay, first, we have to locate the OSD or on-screen display and jungle chips. Luckily, I found data sheets for these common ICs, and if you can't find data sheets, this mod is almost impossible. We have to locate the RGB on-screen display lines that feed into the jungle chip. And just to note, the jungle chip is the main dual image processing brains for the tube picture. Finding these RGB lines turned out to be impossible by probing the board. I could only get so far, there's just too much going on here. Instead, I photographed the bottom of the board, I marked where our on-screen display and jungle chips are, and then traced the RGB output of the on-screen display driver and mapped this to the RGB inputs of the jungle chip. To aid with doing this, because it's mainly a eye squinting task of torment, I use a CAD program to trace these signal paths over the picture. The stock paths look like this. When simplified, we have a circuit that closely resembles other TVs that follow this modification. Our goal is to sever the connections at each path for red, green, and blue. We'll piggyback our own signals here like so. The blanking signal, which tells the jungle chip to use its own RGB input lines, needs a toggle switch. This will enable us to switch between the on-screen display, if we need to adjust our settings, or our own injected RGB inputs. Unfortunately, the area I need to tie into has a junction with 0802 surface mount resistors. I have to remove these to inject my signal upstream, because soldering wires to this would be very sloppy on this side. I can replace the 680 ohm resistor with a through hole part resistor. Each RGB signal needs to be terminated with 75 ohms. Unfortunately, I don't have a 75 ohm resistor, but I can make 73 ohms, which is 220 in parallel with 100 in series with 4.7. And that's why this looks a bit messy. I lifted each of the RGB's 3.3K resistors off the board. And where that lift is, is my junction point for injecting the RGB lines. The blanking circuit was a little bit easier to splice into. Just lift one side of the resistor near the IC leg. The resistor going to the jungle chip is our common point here to the switch. Each pull on the switch goes to either straight to the on-screen display blanking signal or five volts. I marked some hole locations for BNC connectors and drilled some holes with a step drill. These will mount into the rear of the TV housing. I prefer a round toggle switch, but I don't have one. I have a double pull double throw switch that is rectangular. Remember, this is the toggle switch for the blanking signal. This switch tells the jungle chip to always watch our injected RGB lines or only when the on-screen display chip says so. And finally, I'll just add some labels so I know what to connect here. I wrangled these wires a bit before closing everything up, and I'm gonna test using a Sega Genesis Model 2. The Sega Genesis natively outputs RGB, we just need the right cables to get that sweet RGB goodness. And this is where this mod gets a bit pricey. I need a Genesis Model 2 RGB SCART cable and a SCART 2 RGB plus sync BNC cable. So I'm still waiting on a BNC to RCA adapter for the sync line, but I can make do. I would avoid the cheap cables if you're going down this RGB hole of video signal elitism, 
But in the end, this original hardware looks pretty good on modified TVs like this. So was it worth it? It's a little hard to tell between a moving picture between the RGB and the composite shots, but there is some notable difference right here, but I think the best way to make a comparison is with still shots. So on our left is going to be RGB and right is composite. And you can see there's a clear distinction between big changes of contrast around the letters. It's much sharper with RGB. Here's a zoom in of just looking at Sonic. The composite signal is a little bit too bright, but still with RGB, there's clear distinctions between Sonic's outline of his quills. Uh, this is probably the better one to look at. Again, just look at the lettering. It's much clearer, it's much sharper. The transitions are much sharper. And with Ms. Pac-Man, uh, this is probably the easiest way to tell. So I'm gonna blend from composite, and then I'm just gonna blend the RGB over this. And you can clearly see if you're looking at the lettering, it's much clearer. The outlines around lettering is very sharp and it's a notable improvement with this RGB signal. So overall, I'm, I'm really impressed that you can do this with a consumer TV. It's a lot of work um, on some TVs, especially with this board being so small. Really happy with the results. I think it speaks for themselves. So I have some final thoughts about this mod. And basically, if you can't find data sheets for whatever you, whatever TV you're looking at, don't, don't attempt. Because there's not really much you can do without knowing where those RGB lines. And even just that, uh, probing and trying to reverse engineer where those traces go, couldn't have done it unless I located where those RGB lines are between the on-screen display and the jungle chip. And speaking of looking at those data sheets, Closer inspection does kind of tell you what what incoming voltage levels are recommended for like the jungle chip as far as like uh, I looked at the blanking signal and that said it didn't want anything more than one volt to enable blanking and when I measured it I was actually at around 1.7 volts so I ended up going back inside this thing and just adding a diode here that way I know that I'm not overdriving this blanking circuit so I can ensure the longevity of this television. This TV is already 17 years old so adding more stress to it after all this work, I wanted to avoid breaking this after essentially this took me an entire Saturday to put together. Um, and there is a lot more to this mod than I just summed up in this video so it, it did take again at, at least six hours of combing through the internet trying to figure out like what's the best approach to this is it doable can you do it with any tv or the recommended values because i i don't know really anything about analog signals as far as this is concerned and speaking of like serviceability this tv is not very serviceable so the second time i went into it to add that diode uh, there are a couple connectors you have to disconnect to get that pcb out and this connector, and you'll see it again, here's the other side of where it plugs into, uh, it is not made to be touched much because after trying to tug on it to get it apart, uh, the trace is basically lifted off the board. And this is when I decided like, I am not going to refine this circuit anymore. It works and I'm done with it. Uh, for future reference, like I recommend making a printed circuit board for this with uh, 1K potentiometers for the RGB lines. So you can dial down what that actual like peak to peak voltage signal is recommended for those jungle chips. Um, so after that, I I just buttoned it up, it works, and I'm just gonna leave it alone. So then the next TV that I try to do this, I might have a little bit more preparation as far as like a circuit board that has some tuning in the circuit board to make this modification. So next steps, um, this is actually step one of a dedicated Sega Genesis CRT arcade cabinet that I'm working on. So step two is actually designing the cabinet and it's gonna look something like this, which is just like a dedication to the actual MVS Mini 13. And this is a 13 inch TV tube. So hopefully these go together. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Oh, hey, it's me. I still had some stuff to talk about. So if you still had some questions of like what to expect if you do this, uh, this is the on-screen display when it's enabled and then you you trigger it on the TV and then you inject the RGB signals over it. So if I hit the toggle switch in the back to disable it, screen goes blank. Uh, you'll still hear the sound because the sound's coming through. But now if I toggle the on-screen display, 
Uh, the blanking signal is saying it's okay to only show the on-screen display. And what I've noticed is this on-screen display draws black everywhere where the text isn't present. So you can see where the RGB signal is injected, it's actually coming through only where black isn't present and that's the like text of the on-screen display. So I thought this was really interesting. And when I first tested this, I had no idea if I did it right because this is kind of a weird behavior to diagnose unless you play with it. And if you are still skeptical, um, this is when I'm triggering the blanking circuit uh, with like, I think the wrong voltage. And I'm disconnecting each RGB cable one at a time, so you can definitely see like it's looking for RGB signals. And if I plug in those RGB cables in the incorrect locations, uh, the red, green, blue mixing gets all weird. And you can see an artifact of like, I essentially like almost invert the colors to a point. And this is another just example of this is that mod working correctly for this TV. So right now you're looking at the picture with the RGBs. Like it looks like red or blue and green are definitely mixed backwards. Or that's the sync signal that if I disconnect, the screen just loses everything. So you need RGB plus sync. Uh, so again, I just had some extra footage that I wanted to show you because there's a lot going on here to condense in just a couple minutes. But if you do, you know, attempt this circuit, uh, hopefully this video helps, but I use a lot of resources on the web to figure this out. So thanks.